about serving youngsters in Trabeel. Hey, are you sure you're 21? Ask something. He knows. He can hardly 21 himself. It's kind of cute, though, don't you think? Bumpy, pay for the drink. Well, I guess the drinks are on me. That's all right. Keep the drink. Have a drink. Have here. You'll be doing him a favor. Sorry, right, it's against the rules. Can't I have any fun tonight? He told me this is a wild place. There hasn't even been a fight. Why, there are at least three fights every time we have a dance at the yacht club. Is that so? Come in. Who are those men over there? I don't know. There's strangers here. They're suspicious, don't you think? Mind your own business, miss. It's healthier. Who wants to be healthy at night? Twenty-two. Bumpy. We're going places. Well, they left uh, Flushing ten minutes ago. How many? Two trucks. Girl out of the way. Leave her alone. She's stalled perfect for us. <laughs> now you take the first truck. Jack, you take the second. What's the trouble, young lady? My car stole. I can't stall it. Why don't you give the boyfriend a chance? He can't do any worse than you. All right, let's pick him up. All right, here's our Frankie. All right, get going, you. your car, we wouldn't have lost those two trucks. We've got to get this man to a doctor. You can use my car.
I'll drive you to my house. It's near here. You can phone from there. Shove over, Skipper. I've seen enough of your driving for one evening. Oh, boy, whoopee! Oh, we got fun! Whoopee! Whoopee! Yes, sir, Jim. Uh, I don't feel so hot right now. Yeah, that don't look so bad. I didn't, but I know my pearls when I see them. Oh, 
You mean these beads? I bet if you don't wear pearls, they die. So, seeing you never wear them. Dog house, Skipper. Of course, if you want a lot of old dead pearls lying around. Thanks again for saving my life. I catch on, Skipper. What can I do for you this morning? I'd like to look at some accessories. Uh, what line? I beg your pardon? Uh, what particular line of accessories? Uh, tires, mirrors, horns? Uh... Horns? Yes, horns. Horns, uh, yes, right here. You just press those buttons and you get the different horns. <laughs> Wait on us, please. Why, certainly. You want your life saved again, do you? I'd love it. Uh, have they caught the hijackers yet? Not yet. How's the man who was hurt? Oh, he'll be all right. It certainly was exciting, wasn't it? Very. And you are all right? Sure. And are you still in the doghouse? I'm always in the doghouse. I'm having it enlarged so I can have my friends in. <laughs> call on me in the doghouse. Huh? Perhaps you would like to call on me in the doghouse. Not this evening. Tomorrow evening, then? No. I'm not uh, visiting doghouses this season. Oh, all right, if that's the way you feel about it. I catch on, Skipper. <laughs> Look here. What the devil's the meaning of this bill? $460 for accessories during the past month. Yes, sir. No, sir. Oh, step right here, Mr. Whitman. Horns. Miss Julie's. Right here, sir. Inner tube, oil, tire, fog light, accessories, horn, more horns. Yes, sir. There wasn't room to put them on the car. <clears throat> well, uh... What's this gadget? Oh, that, sir? Smoke, sir? Hmm. Forty-five dollars for that? <laughs> yes. Tell the hatch horn. That system. And 
And what's this, uh, come on out horn? Oh, that's that little one right here. And, uh, the French horn. Right here, sir. That's enough. I'll soon put an end to this. Bronx. Are you ill, Julie? You haven't had any appetite lately. I'm all right. She's in love. Who is? Screwy over there. Uh, don't use such language, Robert. I'm sorry, Mother, but screwy is the only word that describes it. Would you mind explaining this? Why, no, not at all. Tires, too. Oil, horn. Did you buy all these things? That's it. You mustn't snatch things, Robert. This is the fella she's screwy, uh, gaga about. You know, the tire salesman she's been running around with? He's not a tire salesman. He's in charge of the shipping department. Kenneth, I mean, Mr. McKay is worth a hundred bumpy springers. Well, he should be. He's costing me enough. And the Boston McKays have always had money. <gasps> I knew his dear mother. <laughs> not this gentleman. He's from Brooklyn. Oh, I mean. He's not from Brooklyn. He's from Hackensack. Well, make up your mind. <laughs> and what's wrong with that? I don't care where he's from. You're not going out with him again. How do you like that, Mrs. McKay? I like that fine. And that's going to be my name. I'm going to marry him. What? Did he ask you? Yes, Julie. as young as I am. So I said, I thought they'd make better wives than the older ones do. Uh, don't you think so? Well, it all depends. Can you cook? Oh, of course. What, for instance? Oh, loads of things. Uh, I could learn. Are you proposing to me by any chance? Yes. Please, let's get married. You mean so much to me, Ken. I can't think of anything else but you. You like me a little bit, don't you? More than a little. But it won't work. Why? I haven't any money, Julie. Oh, money means nothing. Money means nothing to you. But the lack of it means so much, it can spoil anything. I don't believe it. Uh, how much do you make? Exactly $150 a month. Why, that's tons of money. We can get a cute little apartment and... In Brooklyn? What? Well, what's the matter with Brooklyn anyway? It looks the same as New York to me. And besides, I bet the rental's cheaper there. And that makes it better. You'll have to give up your car. It isn't my car anyway. It's George's. Oh, oh, please say yes. Please. I've already told the family you asked me to marry you. What? What do you mean by talking my sister into a stupid marriage? He didn't talk me. I talked him. And I was talking. What's so stupid about the marriage, anyhow? You. Both of you. Have you any money? Enough to take care of Julie, if she's got any sense. Well, that's just what she doesn't have. I resent that. Shut up. I suppose you think my husband will support you? Listen, no one's going to support me. Julie knows exactly what I make and what she can expect. And I love it. Shut up. Now you're telling me to shut up. Oh, you're both insane. It can't last. She thinks marriage is a new game. She doesn't realize it's a serious business. Yes, I do. And Kenneth knows it. Hmm, wealthy girl marries poor, honest boy. I'm not wealthy, and I haven't a dime. And you won't get a dime from me if you marry him. We'll get along without help from anybody. All right. Marry him. But when you get tired of pinching pennies, don't come crawling back to me. Stop for pinching pennies. I hope you're right. Excuse me, Kenneth. Huh? Oh.
Good morning. To the newlywed housewife, we now present Aunt Carrie, who will give you 15 minutes of inexpensive and seasonable recipes. Aunt Carrie. Good morning, housewives. Thank you, Aunt Carrie. I'm ready. If you expect Rose, Katie, and Belle for a bridge luncheon, then eggs for Tina is most enjoyable. Oh, skip the luncheon. Let's get down to dinner. Four pieces of royal ham. Come in. Cut it to... Good morning. Welcome to Honeymoon Row. I'm Mrs. Green from downstairs. And when I see you and your hubby moving in, I said to myself, I said, Carrie Green, there's another newlywed. And ten cents to a donut, she can't cook a lick. I'm afraid you came pretty close. <laughs> oh, well, we all have to go through it once, don't we? So I said to myself, I said, Carrie Green, surprise on six of one of your nice shoes. And here it is. <laughs> What's that, it's hot? Oh, that's awfully nice of you. Uh, won't you come in? Oh, well, no, just for a minute, if I'm not too intensive. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, won't you sit down? I'll put this on ice. On the ice? That's a hot one. <laughs> oh, did you get that? You said on the ice, and I said that's a hot one. Hot ice, get it? <laughs> uh, excuse me. I haven't got all your things yet. This is stuff. Oh, I stuff. Oh, well, my goodness, did I make a fox dressing? <laughs> oh, you know, I just thought the living room looked a little bare. Bare? Oh, well, not bare exactly, but uh, you know, a few pillars and a fancy lamp shade. It makes things look homey. <laughs> oh, wait. I've got a lot of stuff I'm not using. I'll fix this apartment up. It'll be so homey that when your husband gets home, he won't know his home. <laughs> you get that? It'll be so homey, he won't know his home. <laughs> Looks like a curio shop. But honey, don't you get it? It's home. Homey. That's what it is. Homey. But... Don't look so scared. I'm going to take them back. But I had to let you see them. Come on, let's see if there's a lampshade in the stew. Stew? Mm-hmm. Where did you get this junk? Neighbors. You know, we have neighbors. I know it. You know it? How? He told me. At the warehouse. Now, now look. I'm being calm. Uh, see how calm I am? That's just because I'm sure you didn't say what I thought you said. You didn't say he told you at the warehouse, did you? Was he just stopping by? He works there. His name is Brown, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no, darling. You can't get out of it like that. His name is Green. That's it. What'll we do? They're going to call on us. That's what she said. They're going to call on us a lot. He's going to teach you how to play bridge. He'll teach me how to play bridge over your dead body. But he's a whiz at it. Oh, we're in for some gay times. Yes, sir, boy. He's so glad that some young folks in the government. These old fogies around here, they've got no get up and go to them. Oh, Chet, you're making me a little ill. I don't feel so good myself. Well, then stop. She calls him hubby. He calls her the wife, sometimes the mistress. And that isn't all. There couldn't be any more. But there is. He's the manager. Uh, at the warehouse? You mean he's your boss? 
Then we have to be nice to him. Polite, anyway. I thought we could just turn out the lights and not be here when they call. I'll have to answer it. down at the battery. If it's a cocktail, have pineapple in them. I must love my neighbor as myself. Beneath that rough exterior, there beats a kindly heart. Do, do, love thy neighbor. Oh, but you couldn't have known the green. You just couldn't have known the green. Pineapple. You'll try and give it to them early, won't you, Ken? Herbert, for heaven's sake, don't get drunk tonight. You know, you always drink too much at all. Oh, well, you lay off of me. I've been places. Hello, dear. Hello, Mr. Green. Ah, uh, Mr. Green, I want to present... Never yeah, mind, Dad. So you're Ken's wife, huh? The missus is sure raved about you. If she ain't said half enough. Never mind, Herbert. I told you it won't do you no good. <laughs> Not when she's got a hubby like Ken. <laughs> 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 now, Herbert, you not no, you're not that drunk. <laughs> that a swell time. We'll have to try it again. And I hope your headache gets better, Julie, old kiddo. Now, don't forget them remedies I told you about. Uh, take them and they'll kill you. Oh, Herbert, hush. Good night. Good night. Good night. Kenneth, couldn't we move? We can't afford it. Don't think I'm a snob, but the Greens, they're good-hearted. But they're not my, our kind. You understand, don't you? Sure. Do you think I could take this week's theater money and buy a jar of cleansing cream? Oh, certainly. We can still go places. Say, we're not that poor. We're wealthy. We have more than anyone I know. Oh, I'm so happy. Do you know that next Thursday is... Is your birthday. I only mention it because at home they always sort of make a fuss over birthday. If Helen should call up or come over to see us, would you be nice to her? Sure. I'm surprised none of your family have come to see you. To them, a trip to Brooklyn would be like a trip to Europe. Think nothing of it. I what? Invite the family to dinner on my birthday. Sure, you can do anything you want to. I'll never call you hubby. And I'll never call you a wife. All men. So, you know, we were standing there in the store talking, <laughs> and about that time, Elsie come in. And so I says, well, Elsie, I says, of course, everybody to his own opinion, I says. But if I was you, what I would tell him would be a pity, and believe me, I wouldn't let him get bothered. it. Say, get a load of the swells getting out of the Rolls Royce. They're coming in here. I wonder who they can be visiting. <laughs> hey, Herbert. Why don't they have elevators in this place? 302 is on the next floor, dear. Did you 
get the swells. Say, I almost forgot. It's Julie's birthday. I'll bet them's her folks. Oh, if I'd only bought her a birthday present, she'd have to invite us up. But think too late, dear. You want to think about it? Carrie's always thinking. Come on, drag out your glad rags. <laughs> There you are, Mrs. Ferris. Well, I must apologize for being so greedy, but it is delicious. <laughs> Mother. Well, I'll start dieting tomorrow, Robert. As usual. This is the happiest birthday I've ever had. Oh, I must try my coat on again. Do you mind? Of course not. Oh, no. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, I'm so happy. I like that. I give you a fur coat and you kiss him. It's a habit. You don't blame me, do you, Mother? Well, he is a good-looking boy. But it's too bad he's in the hijacking business. What? But, Mother, he isn't. It was the other men. Really? Well, I suppose I got them confused. <laughs> Mother, you say the screwiest, the loud, the, the most, the funniest things. Why, Robert? We didn't know you was entertaining. Oh, no, no. We are run right alone. Yeah, we just brought you up a little present. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. Oh, it's nothing much. The missus just thought you'd feel like celebrating. Run down to the store, she says, and get some wine, and we'll surprise Julie and throw a party. Well, that's very <laughs> sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. and Mrs. Green. This is my sister, Mrs. Whitney. How do you do? Mr. Whitney. How do you do? My brother, Robert. How do you do? And my mother. Your mother? Why, more like your sister, I'd say. You look young enough. Oh, how nice. <laughs> so many people say that. Mm -hmm. uh, your name is uh, Green? Yes. The Boston Green? Oh, no, the Kentucky Green. Really? I knew your dear... Regular little family reunion, eh? Well, we ain't gonna crab your party. Not at all. Take it easy, Skipper. I must love my neighbor as myself. <coughs> That's the spirit. I'm going to be the perfect hostess. Come on, pour the wine. Open that up, Julie. I asked for good stuff, and I want to be sure that I got it. Don't want any of those clerks slipping anything over on me. Oh, that's a hot one. Did you get that, Julie? He says he don't want the clerks slipping nothing over on him. Him. That's a good one. Any mother that slips anything over on Herbert Green has got to get up early. Hey, Julie. Well, he might try. Hmm. You'd think we wasn't good enough for him. Well, I don't see the sister doing so much for them. Ah, uh, forget it. The dame's high hat, so what? Forget it, huh? Well, maybe you won't want to forget it when you hear what she said about you. About me? Yes, about you. <laughs> What'd she say? Well, she turned to that husband of hers and whisper. She thought I couldn't hear her. So she says, don't get absent-minded and tip him. He's not a waiter. Well, I don't get it. Well, I didn't get it myself at first but I think it was some kind of a crack about your clothes. You know, waiters wear even clothes. Well, I says, the Greens don't take a tip from nobody, I says. But if that's a tip for us to go home, I says, we'll go. And that's when I come in the kitchen and got you. And furthermore, I says... Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean that she thinks I look like a waiter? Sure. And your friend Kenneth wasn't any nicer than they were. If you wasn't his boat and him afraid of his job, he'd have picked us out. What's that? Now, 
do you want to forget? They live downstairs, they said. Hmm. Should serve them right if you fired him. Well, I can't fire him. Maybe. I don't like to accuse anyone, but he's the one man who could be tipping them off. Funny they keep picking on us. You're right. They're getting your information from somebody inside. Hello. Speaking? Yes, Mr. Martin. So I look like a waiter, huh? We'll fix that right up. He knows when our shipments come in, when they go out, and where they're going. Send him in here. I wouldn't want him to know. Well, I'll leave you out of it. Thank you. Oh, we fly through the air with the greatest of these. Daring your head on the flying feet. His movements are graceful, oh, tell me to please. And I love his whole kind of way. Oh, we fly through. His movements are graceful, oh girl, he does bleed, and my love, he has fallen away, oh! Why don't you look out? Didn't know I could sing, did you? What's the matter? I've been fired. Fired? Yes, fired. You've been fighting. Who was it? Only the district manager. What? He accused me of stealing, of being in with those hijackers. Where is he? Well, last time I saw him, Green was picking him up off the floor. Well, you didn't get fired. You quit. Well, it was kind of 50-50. Oh. I'm glad you socked him. And I'm glad you quit. I hope their old business goes bankrupt. Well, I'm sure it will. You don't have to worry. You'll get a better job. Sure, I will, honey. Mr. Sloan can't use you. But you, you said the position was still open. I'm sorry, but he phoned the place you worked last, and uh, they refused to recommend you. That's what everybody says. I'm tired of hearing that. Can I just talk to him? I can explain everything. He doesn't want to see you. Thanks. Snoopy eye. Mrs. Snoopy eye, indeed. It's a good thing I'm not a talkative woman. I'd give you a piece of my mind, Mrs. Snoopy eye. My, you'd think I was a pet or something. I'm sorry I can't use it. I got so much junk now I can't get rid of it. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Now, come on, don't be so downhearted. Times are getting better. You'll get a job. Don't worry. <laughs> so long. So long, Fred. Hello, Mr. Silverman. Hello. Now you bring me a winter coat in the summertime. <laughs> I can't use it. I... I... How much you want on it? Fifty dollars. Well, it's a pretty coat, but uh, I'll give you twenty-five dollars. But I must have fifty dollars. <laughs> well, I'll give you twenty-five. Give me fifty dollars, and your daughter can wear it to the dance. What dance? Any old dance. My daughter don't go to dances. Well, she should. If she wears this coat, she can get the richest man in the neighborhood. <laughs> you come here so much, you talk better than me already. <laughs> I'll give you $25. All right. All right. Silverman. Yes? I'm sick. What's the matter? Oh, here. Sit down. Sit down, please. What's the matter? Mama! Mama! Quick, please, come here. What are you hollering about? Come here, she's sick. Please get the pneumonia bottle. What's the matter? I know. My head feels funny. Papa, greet me in the morning! No. This sickness will soon pass away. Remember, Papa, when Sammy was coming? <laughs> You're asking me if I remember. <laughs> Wasn't I sicker than you? <laughs> Wasn't I almost crazy <laughs> that your Papa go down to the delicatessen and get me some pickles? Pickles, pickles, all day long it was pickles. <laughs> and with Rosie it was gefilled to fish. And with Rosie it was French pastry. With Rosie it was gefilled to fish. With Rosie it was French pastry. Gefilled to fish. French pastry. Gefilled to fish. Who should know better? To you or to me? What on earth are you two talking about? What are we talking about? We are talking about babies. Babies? Sure. You mean, I... Sure. What did you think, me? <laughs> but I never dreamed. What a place I bet you find it out. Winter would love it. Sure, your husband will love it. But Winchell isn't my husband. No. Ha, ha. Uh -huh. Winchell is not your husband. You're an under man. Oh. Hmm. Things aren't tough enough. Now, now, honey. Everything will be all right. When the time comes, Papa will rent you a crib and a buggy. You know, it's a little bit set and handy, but it's going to be fumigated. And it's nothing to worry about. It's a perfectly natural thing. Mrs. Murphy had eight, Mrs. Ginsburg had ten, and Tony, the boot black's wife, I can't count that many. <laughs> Fifty dollars. Oh, you're both so sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm going to have a baby. Bottle cup. You're welcome. Hello, Mr. Snoopy Eye. Here's something you'll love. I'm going to have a baby. What? And you can broadcast it. I've already started to clean things. Well, who would have thought it? Going to have a baby. Ken? Ken? Well, Ken, what are you doing?
doing. He's leaving. And you're going home with me. I tried to call you and found your telephone had been disconnected. Why, you haven't even any food in the house. I have now. And if you want to stay for dinner, I'll share mine with you. Julie. We're all leaving for Europe, and you're going with us. Not a chance. Don't be a fool. Haven't you had enough of all this? Why, this man can't even make a decent living for you. I'm satisfied. You don't belong here, Julie. You should have money. Meet people of your own kind. Get out of it now. You're only fooling yourself. He'll never amount to anything. Oh, yes, he will. And you've said all you're going to say. He's my husband. Do you actually mean that you're going to stay here with things as they are? If Ken stays and we don't get thrown out, I'll stay. All right, Julie. Have your fun. What are you doing? Putting him back in the drawer. Well, don't. I'm leaving. Your sister's right. This whole thing's wrong. I'm a failure. Better go with your family to Europe. If I'm on my own without having to worry about you, maybe I'll get someplace. It's worth a try anyway. We've had nothing but bad luck since we met. I want to get out of your life. Go back to your family. Forget about me. You can get the divorce. Maybe we'll both be better off. to say something. There. There isn't anything to say. Oh, Julie. I didn't mean that. You know I didn't. You... You've done... You've given me too much already. You... I can't tell you what you've meant to me. Julie. I worship you. Then why are you leaving me? So you can have the things you've always had. Things I can't give you. But I don't want them. Don't you realize by this time, I just to stay here and be with you. That's all I want. You don't seem to understand how much I, I love you. I belong to you, Ken. What happens to you is, is as safe as if it had happened to me. Just like we were one person. You can't change that. Just because things go wrong. You mustn't. You won't, will you? I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't anything. You have me. Oh, Skipper. I have something else to tell you, Ken. What? Julie. Why didn't you tell me before? I didn't know about it before. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We'll never call him Junior. No. Oh, Buddy or Sonny. He'll have a personality all his own. That's right. And we'll be firm, yet gently and correcting him. Because if you ever whipped him, I'd die. Don't worry. You'll never get a whipping from me. You can get more out of kids by being nice to them. Yes, sir. My kid will never hear a harsh word out of me. And what's more... Oh. I send the luggage down to Pier 57. Oh. 
Did uh, Mrs. Whitney come in yet? Uh, not yet, sir. Oh, uh, here she comes now, sir. Hello, dear. Oh, hello. Well, what happened? It's no use. Julie absolutely refuses to listen to reason. She's insane. Why, they didn't even have food in the house. Did you give her any money? I left her what money I had. But what are they going to do while we're away? Well, I think I'd let them work that out. I admire Julie's spirit. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. You know, I think they'll find a way out. Mm -hmm. I hope you're right. Hold everything! Julie! Look! Remember Red the driver was with me that night? You mean the night I met you? Well, he's got a place of his own now. I know he'll give me a job. My hat. My hat! Fly through the air with the greatest of these. The daring young man on the flying trustees. How old is the little boy? Huh? Why, uh, uh, what are those things there? Well, those are for the little girls. Well, uh, may maybe better give me one of each. You got a twin? Gracias, senor. Thank you very much. You got the job. Uh-huh. Start tonight. And, uh, these are for you. And, uh, this is for him. And, uh, this is just in case. <laughs> Boy, this is a funny time to cry. I know it. I guess I just can't stand prosperity. Oh, honey. Hey, what are you making? What's this? Huh? Don't you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's in your department, Skipper. <laughs> Be right with you, can't hold it. We got a rush order here, must unload tonight. There's the unload okay. Who's the guy driving red? He used to handle the shipping for International, and he'll be very useful to us. Is he wise? No. It don't make any difference. He's broke. He'll do anything. All right. <laughs> Everything is lovely and the goose hangs high. Ken, let's go. That's okay, Ken. All right. Boy, it feels great to be working again. Hey, Red, you got the wrong car. This is a consigned international. You load the tires. That's all you got to worry about. You said you'd do anything to make some dough, didn't you? Yeah, but I'm not going to do anything. It's all right, that's all right. You're doing it. You'll make more here than you ever made over there in a month. But... Come on, come on, get going. Ken here? No, he's working tonight. Working? Has he got a job? Yes, he has a very good job. Oh, that's fine. I'm glad to hear that. You know, uh, the wife was just telling me about, about you, and I was thinking that 
pretty tough lines for a guy not working and his wife and that way. And I thought if Ken would like to come back with us that I'd see what I could do to get him his job back. And of course, if he's working, why... Well, that's very kind of you. Who's he working for? Mr. Miller. He used to be with your company. Red Miller? Yes. I wonder where he got dough to go into business. I'm sure I don't know. But he must be doing very well. He got in four columns of tire today. And they have so many orders to fill, they have to unload tonight. Is that so? Yes. And they might even have to call on you to help them fill our orders. Well, I guess we could do that all right. Uh, we got four carloads ourselves in tonight. Well, I'm glad that he's working. Thank you. <coughs> Good night. Good night. Remember me to Mrs. Uh, Green. Yes, I will. Four cars. Oh. And so I says, now don't get huffy, dear, and misunderstand me. What I'm telling you is for your own good. And then she <laughs> said that it's... Excuse me. I gotta use this phone. It's important. Well, has it been the idea? You got a nerve. Every time I pick up that telephone, you come grab it out of my hand. Of course, my conversations don't amount to anything. Oh, no. No, indeed. Hello, oh, hello. Is this the freight yard? Well, this is the manager of the International Warehouse. We were supposed to get a shipment of tires at 8 o'clock. And I gotta find out if they came in. What? No, I don't. No, I gotta find out if they come in. What? What? Oh, get me the watchman, quick. What's the matter? Oh, get out of here. Get out of here. Hey, this is important. You make me sick. Put your stall and step on it. We'll call the police, quick! Operator! Operator, get me the police, quick! Hurry!
What's the matter with you? You get them all, Patterson? Every one of them. Well, then I'll say one thing for you. You don't miss. Yeah, you double-crosser. Yeah, you're a pal. I told you you'd gum it up. Take him in, Patterson. Come on, kid. I'll get you to the hospital. Okay. You're a big shot over there now, boy. He should be. He ought to get the Congressional Medal. Well, I don't know about those medals, but he can write his own ticket. Boss wants to put him in charge of the Hackensack office. Where I was born. Yeah? He can put me anywhere he likes as long as I work. <laughs> no more worries now, Skipper. That's it. That's it. That's what? That's what I crave. That's what I wanted. Popcorn. Popcorn. <laughs> I catch on, Skipper. I'll get it. Wait a minute. Stay where you are, you loafers. I'll get it. Oh. <laughs> So this is the drugstore you went to to buy a cigar, eh? Well, you didn't fool me. I said to myself, I said, Carrie Green, you know very well, he's not telling you the truth. He's not going anywhere. Now, wait a minute. Stop a minute. Stop a minute. I've got to go catch the popcorn man. The popcorn man? Yeah, Julie oh, wants. Oh, Julie wants. Julie wants. Always Julie, Julie, Julie. Stop it. Pick that up. Pick it up yourself. 